Hi, and welcome to another episode of Pivotal Moment. I'm your host, Nikita Foston. And actually, I should say welcome to a new season of Pivotal Moment. We have been away for some time, but a pandemic cannot stop us. As my next guest will tell you, God is doing a great work. We have been on hiatus, but we're still expanding. So find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and Pandora. Now, speaking of a great work, my next guest is the singer behind this amazing, I call it my personal anthem, in his growing list of award-winning melodies. Brian Courtney Wilson is a Grammy-nominated gospel recording superstar who has shared the stage with the likes of Miranda Curtis, Yolanda Adams, Lettucey, a recent tribute to Lionel Richie. He's the winner of multiple stellar awards, a GMA Dove Award, ASCAP Rhythm and Soul Award. And over the course of his incredible career, he's also received nominations for NAACP Image Award and Billboard Award. His fifth and latest album, Still Received Five Stars by the Gospel Journal of Music. He has performed all over the world, all over the world bringing crowds to their feet and often to tears. And he joins us today. Welcome, Brian Courtney Wilson. Thank you, Nikita. I appreciate that gracious introduction, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, We were talking at the start of the show, and I was just sharing uh, with Brian and to our listeners, uh, as you have likely heard, Brian, yourself, this wonderful, soothing, reassuring voice wrapped up in spirit that ministers to us uh, each and every time you take the mic. And I want to start there. Um, I want to talk about a great work. Um, and you performed this at the Stellar Awards and you were at the piano, Brian, before you got on the stage and you started singing this. He that has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform it. And in Uh due time, God will blow your mind with what he planted inside of you to bless the world as it blooms. So my question is this, Brian, did you did you did you always know that this great gift was planted inside of you? Uh, You know, I've always been a singer since I was, you know, a child. My my dad took me to choir rehearsal with him on Saturday nights, the, the the male chorus at my church, Rock of Ages, there in Maywood, Illinois. Um, and then I remember, you know, growing up in Chicago and you have front stoops and my front stoop was the stage. We had the, you know, the neighborhood talent shows there. And so since I was a child, I've always kind of played like I was going to be on the stage. <laughs> it wasn't for real. It was like, like you know, that. that was play for me. Yes. But it wasn't until I got to college, um, that I realized I had a special gift before that I was singing in church and you know, how like you were on your family, friends and neighbors, they going to clap regardless. It, it didn't matter. Who, of course. Who, what you were sounding like. It was when I got to school and I was around people that didn't know me and they were clapping and I knew I had something distinct, but it still took some time to mind, to mind for my distinct voice. Right. And then what I was supposed to do with it, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of in that groove now where I kind of know, what I'm supposed to be doing with my voice and where it should be. Amen and amen. Well, I'm glad that you were able to kind of cultivate that at U of I. And I'm going to get to that um, in another question. But I want to ask you this, because on your site, Brian, you talk about uh, the modern gospel messenger. And he's described or she as an informed and sophisticated person in thought, continually negotiating between humanity's imminence and the behest of eternity, which I thought was pretty deep. Um, but there's an incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I love every time I hear that, too. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, I like this. This is uh this is very uh poetic, you know, but it gives us great context into like your soul and the outcomes that you are seeking, like when you sing. So there is this incredible sense of un or social unrest really in many ways. Um but your music, Brian, still reminds of reminds us really of God's promises and his truth. So mm-hmm. do you think that the role of a gospel singer, uh, recording artist has evolved? And is there a greater responsibility, do you feel, in your work? And if you do feel that way, how have you responded? That's that's an involved question. Let me see if I can break it down. Uh, <laughs> I have no doubt. Certain, I read the bio. Yeah. You can do that and more. Yeah. I think it has certainly evolved, one, because I think the visual is more important now. You know, we're very, we live in a very social media, digital driven right. uh, society where before uh, I don't think the visual is important as it is today. So you can't just sing. You got to there has to be a, a look that's compelling uh, with what you're singing. 
And so that's, that's part of it. And then, like I just mentioned, the way you get the music out has changed. Yes. Uh, and you have to have a command of social media right now. And I'm saying right now, cause that could change in an instant. I remember when my space was the way to go. Right. Now you, that's like a relic, <laughs> you know, a dinosaur. You can't say my space and still be cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then I, the, the third thing I would add is, uh, I, you know, when I was a child, I think the church, the black church in particular had more of a benefit of the doubt, if you will, in our community yeah. than it does today. And so, you know, where everybody just kind of grew up in church or grew up around church and, and there were certain things you could say and there was a language that people understood. Um, I'm not sure that language and culture is shared mm-hmm. as much as it used to be, mm-hmm. which requires the messenger, if you will, to um, to mind for better language, right. to communicate and connect with people. And so that those are three things I will point out in terms of what has changed. Wow, that's that's really beautifully said. And I think you're doing that in your music. Like there is a different language for a different culture at this different and new time. So we got to connect in different ways. And and you're really doing that. Um, So this show, of course, is called Pivotal Moment. No, thank you. Um, This is Pivotal Moment. And so we really want to talk about pivotal moments that kind of take you from where you are to where you want to be. And we can't really do that without addressing, you know, the pandemic and what we've been in. So here's my question. Um, Has there been something throughout, you know, this this period? It's almost two years now during this uh, pandemic we've been in. Has there been something that made you look at life differently, Brian, or look at the future with a different lens? I I love the question. Because I think many of us had a, a chance to reflect mm-hmm. um, in ways that we hadn't, you know, that's in many ways, we're like on this hamster wheel before that. And then we were forced to be confined yep. and you, you, you're, you're with your thoughts and you're with uh, your fears, you're with your dreams, even prayerfully, mm-hmm. you, you got in touch with what you really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that was pivotal for me uh, to start was the George Floyd um, killing yes. that we saw. Yes. And when that happened uh, and how brazen it was, uh, I remember how angry I felt when I saw it. And I remember just, you know, there was a rage. And I think many people felt that rage and wanted to lash out at it. Yeah. And then at, at one point, I realized how you know, not that the rage wasn't justified, but in many ways it was distracting me mm. from what I really was supposed to be doing in the world. And it reminded me, I believe Alice Walker talked about this with a, on a Charlie Rose interview years ago okay. about how as an artist, she was, you know, it's like you, you spend all of this time thinking about, you know, the oppression leveled against people of color mm. and how to combat it. And you can't just create and, and many times your art is around dealing with that pain, dealing with that inequity. And uh, you long for uh, a place where you can be free of that burden and just create and make beautiful things. And so one of the pivotal moments for me was deciding, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to use the agency I have left yeah. to really focus on um, planting for the future I want to see. And uh Mm-hmm. Planting seeds uh, for beautiful things, planting seeds that build confidence in in my children and 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 my neighbor, planting seeds that remind people that there is hope, because um, hope keeps you going, hope keeps you Amen. faithful, it makes you continue to uh, keep doing the right thing, moving forward regardless of circumstance, and that's what I want my 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 next years to be about. You know, yeah. it doesn't. And I don't, I don't want to delude myself into thinking that that pain is gone. It's still Correct. there. We just we got we get reminders of it all the time. And it's always been there. But we've always had people who have overcome it and, and decided, OK, I'm not going to let that stop me from right. planting for the future that I want to see. And, and that's what I want to focus on. I really like that response, especially the part about the planting seeds. And really, it sounds like shifting your focus, like you have all of this energy and this talent and this gift. And how do you direct that to the best outcome? Not only for now, but for your future. Um, And I want to ask you about um, still, we talked about that a little bit uh, a few minutes ago, but in that, in that, 
in that song, Brian, sort of what you just answered and addressed about uh, approaching music and how to be in this space where you can be free to create. In that song, you said, this time I will be still and the mountain has to move. The mountain must obey because I've got work to do. I'm going to see it through. God showed me the way. And I'm choosing it today. Lord, I cannot sing because if I could, I'd sing it. But <laughs> I'm going to save my <laughs> listeners the tragedy. <laughs> well, don't, don't box yourself in. Never say oh, that. Brian. No, I, 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 I've seen stranger things. <laughs> Well, praise God for your faithfulness. <laughs> but I'm going to leave that to the superstar on the other end. So let me ask you this, uh, Brian, in that question. What mountains did you have to move to get to where you are today? Uh, great question. I think one of the things I speak to in the song, and that's um, uh, the presence of anxiety. Yes. And what, you know, you, you, you asked about pivotal moments. And that was one of the things I had to get really real about in my quiet time, in my confinement, like, hey, man, you're carrying some extra tension in your shoulders Mm -hmm. and it's affecting your performance. Seriously. And you're you're, uh, sometimes your breathing is not as controlled as it should be in situations where it just doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. that that you're you're feeling that way. And so I'm not ashamed to say, you know, I talked to counselors about it and got tools to deal with it. I realized that, you know, I've always had it, you know, since I was a child. But, and I, you know, in my circle of influence in my community, that's just not something you talked about. Like, man, I'm scared. That's the bottom line, right? When you say you're anxious, I'm, Correct. I'm scared. Correct. Who do you say it to? How do your people respond to it? Yes. And so you learn to try to mask it. You learn to try to push it down and push through it. And you don't really address it. And one of the freedoms I have felt over the last two years is one just being real about it. Like, man, there are times when I am anxious and, but beyond that, I have the ability to address it and I'm, I'm developing tools to deal with it. And so in many ways, that's the mountain that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to, which, you know, gives you access to other mountains that you can address in your life, what? whether that's, you know, uh, being more prolific as an artist or, Trying new things like singing on your own podcast. You like to that you that was so, a nice. That was nice, yeah. Brian. That was real cool. Very smooth. Never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying that there are things that are things that the possibilities that sometimes you have not considered. Yeah. Or at least for me, because of the presence of anxiety, because you've yes. kind of constricted your perspective. Yes. And so, kind of loosening up and relaxing. Realizing when it's uh, happening so yeah. you can take steps to avoid it. Um, no, let me not say avoid it. So you can take steps to address it. Yes. In the moment can can kind of open your eyes to other things, other possibilities. Put you in a flow. Put you in a I think, flow. Yeah. And I think flow, I think flow is more important. It can be more productive than force. Ooh. In many ways. Oh, that's flow is more I like productive. That. Okay. And you, and you you have a it's available to all of us. Amen. I really believe that. Amen and I receive that. Oh, that was really good. You said flow is more important than force. I think so. That's a message. I received that. And let me ask you about that because that's really insightful. Um but before you get to the flow which is more important than the force. Sometimes you got to just be still, right? And hear from him in some kind of way. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. In in your song Still, and I just really love it. It's, it's become my anthem. Uh, you mentioned Thanks. in the song, but I think on the site, you talked about that stillness does not translate to apathy, right? No. So no. so this is an important kind of thing for, for a lot of people because the pressures of life, the responsibilities of where we are demand so much movement. How do you slow your mind and your world down to here? And how do you remain still in the meantime so that you can welcome the insight? I I love that question. One of the things I'm very intentional about is is carving out at least five to 10 minutes a day Mm -hmm. where I I really am intentional about my breathing and intentional about um, quieting my mind um, according to my faith, focusing on um, uh, a scripture maybe that yes. you want to put in your mind and really focus on and uh, mm-hmm. let that be the, the anchor for your day, so to speak. And uh, 
there's so many, you know, you say in a world that commands our movement. Yeah. I, I believe that's true. But many times you, you have not everything that's moving is for you. Mm. Not every path Come on now, that's come on now, Pastor out Brian, preach. <laughs> and not, <laughs> well, we're going to have to expand this. This is good, Brian. Keep going. <laughs> and, not, and not everything... <laughs> Not everything that the world offers you and says is valuable right. is really what's going to be beneficial to you. That's a word. And so you have to really take that time and, and focus on what that's going to be. And when I say stillness, it's not about apathy. Many, I think that times when you have been given instruction, yeah. you've been told in the, in the quiet times when you, when you got a glimpse or a whisper from God what to do, but mm-hmm. you get distracted by all the other things. Absolutely. And it makes you wonder whether... If I stay focused on this, is it going to be enough? Mm. Is this going? If I, is this enough to keep going, to keep digging, to trust that um, there's going to be a harvest from it at the end of the day? Yes. And so, this stillness is really about focus and resolve and deciding. Okay, if God has given me an instruction, or whatever you want to call God, whatever this voice is, yes. is if I'm if I've gotten an instruction and I got a peace about it and I'm sure about it, then let that peace resound even when the circumstances change around you and let your, your faith and your faithfulness and the work you put behind your faith and faithfulness be the evidence of the things that you hope for when you got the whisper in the first place. Keep going. Hey man, I'm going to put this on repeat. This is just going to be <laughs> like a constant <laughs> source of inspiration. I want to talk about the faith. Hey, can I, let me say this. Sure. I gotta say this. Sure. I think that's important. Yes. I think you have to practice it. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It's like a like learning to play the piano or learning any skill. It needs to be practiced. It's not something that happens um, naturally all the time. Yeah. So you have to practice. I love that you said you're gonna put it on repeat. That's what, that's really to me what when we gather as a church Amen. body. That's mm-hmm. what that's about. It's a reorientation to what are the best practices so we can move forward mm. and see the future that we want to see. This is what I'm talking about. You know, Brian, you are really revealing so much truth and so much power right now. Um, I want to ask you about more of the truth that you revealed to the world, that you revealed on stage um, at the Dove Award. So let me ask you about this, because um, Erica Campbell from Mary Mary introduced you. You sang Worth Fighting For. Um, You had this Mm -hmm. all-male youth choir behind you, including your son. And you sang, and again, I'm not going to sing. I'm going to say this, Brian. (laughs) But you said uh, you met me deep in my despair to show me you would never leave me there. You claim me because I was made for so much more. And so there is not a dry in the house or dry eye in the house once uh, you and your son close out the song. Uh, And it was just simply like one of those moments that you just got to take in. You know, it was just really moving in so many ways. So I want to ask you about how that felt for you, how that felt for your son, how that felt for your family. Talk about that. That's so funny that you asked that specific question because it did not, I don't know that I felt anything what? in the moment. For real. It is, I was happy that my son was able to come and do that with me, Uh huh. but I couldn't see. I couldn't see what was going on in the audience. Uh-huh. And then, you know, that particular audience, they don't necessarily respond the same way African-Americans do. And so, mm. you know, when, when we when we like something, we say it. We, say it up. <laughs> we can't stop saying it. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't see in the moment what was happening. All I knew was, oh, I love this question. All I knew was that we were supposed to do it. I think at the time we were. I don't want to I don't want to mess this timing up, but I want to say we were dealing with the Trayvon Martin uh, uh, situation with Trayvon Martin. OK. You may have even been coming into dealing with Philando Castile at the time, too, okay. and how he was he was murdered in cold blood. Yeah. And uh, what I wanted to do was just front face a picture of African-American men and boys mm. singing Amen. and standing there and, and um, in the assurance that God is present and fighting with them and for them. And uh my son being there was, you know, he was, he's on the recording. Yeah. And so I was just, it was a blessing to me to just have him there, but I didn't know how people were, were even taking it in. And so I'm grateful that when you say that wasn't a dry eye in the house, I didn't see it at the time. I don't know. Well, you know? they were standing, they were clapping, they were crying. I was like, 
wow, you know, and I'm looking at it from a screen and I am moved. And it is, I think, the brotherhood, the unity, the leadership, um, you know, the parenting and all of that in the midst of so many things that are adverse to that. And then you see this this beautiful kind of representation of what it should be. And you see that right in front of you. And if that was at the exact time of all the unrest really beginning um, or maybe a seeing more of it, because it's always been going on. But, you know, that was even more poignant. And so I just thought it was really wonderfully done. Thank you. Thank you for that. And so it felt it felt like we we finished our assignment. That's what yes, it felt like. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you knew the assignment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to know that. You got to know that. And so and so after that, I think it may have been after that performance. I know you were being interviewed about um, kind of like your takeaways and your thoughts. And one of the things that they asked was about your wisdom and how to move forward and how you had done all the things you were doing. And you talked about um, the value of faithfulness. You talked about mm-hmm. continuing to get your work done. And you said this, which was really struck me, letting go of offense quickly to yeah. get to what God has for you. And that, it, that can be tough. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. So, so how do we take these lessons, uh, your words, the ministry that is your music and apply it to our daily lives to have this closer walk and the harvest, you know, from these seeds? That's a great question. And it's a great question because according to my faith, it's, it's not easy to do. No. It's a narrow road <laughs> is the way it's described in the Bible. Correct. Like not many people can walk it. And so, um, so I'm not alone. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But what I would, this is what I would say. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't sir. discount. I wouldn't discount the small opportunities you have to do. Mm, that's wisdom. The yes. little, the little things that you can do along the way, like whether you, you know, you go to the store and, you know, somebody cuts you off at the, in the parking lot or something mm-hmm. at your space, especially around this time of year. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What you going to, I mean, how how should you respond to that? I'm going to say Pastor how Brian told me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go to my Nikita lane. I'm going to go to the Pastor yeah. Brian lane. <laughs> and then I'm a, I'll am i tell you, there's a there's a passage in the Bible that talks about the Lord's Prayer and where he tells us how to pray. Yes. And one of the verses in that in that prayer says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Correct. So when we ask God to forgive us, first of all, you acknowledge the fact that I have a debt. Mm-hmm. I'm I owe too, right? It ain't mm-hmm. just the world owes me. I owe. And if I want to be forgiven, I got to find a way to forgive other people of their debt Truth. against me. And what I've seen, sometimes it costs you your ego in the moment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. man, you going to let that slide? But you, there's a big harvest on the end of it if you could figure out a way to do that in any given situation, to forgive a debt. Amen. And then let the Lord forgive your debt. Because typically, he's forgiving more than you're forgiving. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Correct. That is that is a very important uh, perspective to, to maintain and to remember during those times. And that, it happens all the time. Uh, where we have to kind of be mindful of that. Um, and I want to ask you this because you mentioned U of I, University of Illinois. So shout out to our Alina out there. Um, yeah. But I'm thinking about the time there um, and, and where you are now, you know, the Grammy Award nominations, the NAACP, mm-hmm. all of these nominations and these awards that you've won over the over the process and performing all over the world and crowds are on their feet, as I mentioned. So when you see this response to your message, to your music, what is what are you thinking? What is going through your mind and your heart when those moments occur? Or when you stop to think about it? Okay. A lot of gratitude at times when I'm overwhelmed with um what I feel like is the amount of debt I've been forgiven. Mm. Uh overwhelmed by uh God's grace. That's you know, according to my faith, we talk about grace a lot, how you've been given um, access to places that you didn't necessarily earn along the way. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And it's it's like when I look back over my life, I could see where this grace connects the dots, so to speak, and creates this picture um, that other people are benefiting from, but no, no one more than me, mm-hmm. because I get a chance to get to apprehend God's grace in those moments. And there have been times 
when I just, I can't stop crying mm-hmm. about it. Like, I, I'm talking about in really awkward moments. Like, I was at Circle of Sisters in New York, and I was sitting backstage, and I had to go on, and I just was in tears wow. because I knew that the Lord had me in his hand. And it's mm-hmm. always had me in his hand since I was on that front stoop playing like I was going to be at Circle of Sisters one day. Do you, do you follow what I'm saying? And so that's how it feels. And I'm grateful. And I'm grateful. The vision became the reality. The vision became a reality. Amen, Brian. Let me ask you, what have you learned or what have you been surprised to learn about yourself in the process? Because when you talk about shedding tears backstage before you go into the limelight that you were playing about as a child and now it is a reality, what have you learned about yourself in this process? And what are you surprised to learn about yourself in this process? More and more, I'm just learning about um, the power I carry. The Amen. power to influence a situation. And it's not just about how I sing. It's about my posture in the situation mm. and my ability to preach, to smile sometimes, <laughs> just or speak a word or, you know, give somebody a hug in yes. a moment. Or, you know, you got $20 and you hear it in your spirit, man. I heard the Lord say, give you this $20. Mm. I don't know what is supposed to, supposed to happen. I, and I think we all carry that type of power. Yeah. to to influence situations. I tell this story a lot. It's, a, it's in the Bible, too, about two fish and five loaves of bread. And that little boy, he brought it to a mountainside. And Jesus said, how are we going to feed all these people? It was right. like thousands of people right. out there. Now, that little boy had no idea that that two fish and five loaves of bread was going to turn into a miracle Correct. that we were going to chronicle. And Amen. you and I are going to talk about today. Amen. But we all are carrying something like that that if we can kind of put it on another level, put it in some hands that go beyond our perspective here, wow. you, it'll blow your mind. Wow. It'll blow your mind. And so that's what I've learned is that I'm carrying more sometimes than I really understand. Mm. And if I can stay, if I can get into a good flow mm. and getting in that flow starts with love, you know, let love lead you, let, mm. letting your willingness to, to see to want the best for the people around you, guide you. Um, You can see some crazy things happen, some big things that'll blow your mind. And that's my prayer for you, even the key to that, that uh, the Lord makes you cry in public because because of the way he overwhelms and blesses you moving forward. I hope you see that. Uh, When that happens, I'm going to call and say, Pastor, it worked. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say it worked. I was not expecting it. I did not see it. And honestly, I'm getting so much from um, from this conversation, which is much less like an interview and more like a revival of sorts. So I just want to thank you for your wisdom. And I want to ask you this because it seems like gospel music. I don't know if they would say uh, I think LL had that. Don't call it a comeback. But you see, Mm -hmm. like when you did the NPR music, uh, Tiny Desk concert, they said something Mm -hmm. about there's always a place for gospel music. And that kind of like you had transformed the office just in your presence there and your performance there. And so you see gospel in all these different places and you see some artists who are not considered gospel kind of delve into the gospel uh, world. Do you think that it is because we need it, because we miss it, or because people are beginning to learn that you can't do without it? Or is it just transcending every market because it needs to be there now? That's a great question. I, you know, you're making me think of, um, you know, that it's real popular now, the verses. Yes. And um, Kirk Franklin and, and Fred Hammond did one, which was one of the most popular yes. that they, they've done. And I think it's because, again, whether we really got it or not, it is infused into our culture. And it was so ubiquitous sometimes that we, t- we, we took it for granted. And I think the circumstances that we've seen, again, with the George Floyd um, thing and, and with the COVID and, yes. and the transitions we've seen, uh, people were reminded that there were some truths that we needed to anchor to. And, and that's what gospel has always tried to carry. I think mm. as uh, those truths and put them in some um, musical ways that yes. other people could carry them, you know, when they need them the most. And so I think that's what you're seeing is that people want to, they want to get at the truth, yeah. you know, and yeah. gospel has always tried to deliver that the best way it could. And you are speaking it. And I'm, I'm going to say this. Um, 
the truth of the gospel and how it is in every place that we are now standing in places that you don't always um, assume. And so I've been listening to your holiday hits too. I was listening to this mm-hmm. Christmas this morning. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a jam jam. It is a jam jam, and yeah. I just love that you have these uh, these holiday hits out right now as we kind of move into that uh, holiday season. Um, and your voice really puts like this sultry spin on a classic and classics, and bring those closer to home. So we've got this holiday series, Brian. We've got your fifth album. You work with all these folks. What could you possibly do next? And who do you want to work with? Oh wow, that's, that's a great question. I was just asked this question too. Okay. And I want to, I want to get with Stevie wonder one time. Amen. Even if it's on the cowbell or something, just let me come standing there. <laughs> doing something. The For real. And, um, we want to, this is going to sound vague. I really just want to get better at communicating what God has called me to communicate mm. and any medium that we are supposed to do it in. Especially with music, though, I know I got a special gift there. Yes, you do. But I want to continue to expand on it and and really help to create culture the best way I can. I think that starts with communication and effective communication in ways that connects us in ways that we didn't uh, necessarily um, anticipate. So in places where, you know, I didn't think that would be a good combination, but I see it. it (laughs) So like a good example to me would... um, you know, we just did a duet with, with Lettuce. Yes. And it's a cover of a song I've loved since college. It's called Be Real Black For Me. Amen. And um, <laughs> it's funny because I've always just done gospel music. That's probably the first, the closest thing to R&B soul that I've done. And so some some of the people that have been following me are like, huh, what you doing? <laughs> and then some people... Some people are like, yo, I've never heard of him before. I'm glad I'm glad that uh-huh. Lettuce exposed us to this voice. Yes. And then some people who've been following me all along, they don't even question it. They just kind of know, okay, that's that's him. Yeah. That's who he was made to be. Yeah. And so that's what I want to get at, like as authentically as I can moving forward. Who am I and what's the most valuable thing we could present that brings us together? Hey, man, Brian, I got to tell you, when it comes to communicating, you are doing um, a phenomenal job of that, whether it is through music or through ministry, which really in this interview and probably the many interviews you do are ministering or ministering to folks. And we need that Um, in many ways. It never you never tire of the truth. And in as many forms as we can get it and receive it, we need it. Thank you. So keep it coming. Um, and I love the Lettucey uh, collaboration. It's really a wonderful song. And I hadn't heard you do something outside of gospel either. So, I, But I know the voice. I was like, that's Brian. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You know what I mean? But it was it was powerful. It was beautiful. Um, and so I want to ask you this before we close out about any advice that you'd like to share with aspiring gospel artists or, you know what, or anybody really uh, that's listening to this and trying to use their gifts to find peace and even prosperity on this journey. Um, what advice about what to do and how to maintain course in this difficult, you know, climate that we're in? Um, I would go back to something we talked about earlier, and that's, I mean, really get intentional about intentional, amen. carving out time for stillness mm-hmm. and getting quiet and really hearing, like, man, what am I supposed to be doing? And don't, oh my good, one of my good friends, Juanita Rasmus Campbell, Juanita Campbell Rasmus wrote a book called Learning to Be, which I highly recommend, um, about, about her, her path, uh, reminded us not to judge it. Like whatever you hear, don't judge it. Because again, you know, as, as the Bible story tells us, God can use two fish and five loaves of bread to feed thousands. Um, and if you discount it mm-hmm. in the moment, you might miss the miracle. So really get intentional about getting still. Really listen for, okay, what should I be doing next? Yes. And then I, I used to say this all the time. If you can't hear it, let love lead you. Start with love. Amen. Start with, you know, if you still got your mama, call your mama and say something good. Send mm-hmm. her something. Yeah. If you got a neighbor that needs something next to you. Take the garbage can there for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You see some trash in your neighborhood. You're not responsible for the trash. I know. You don't get paid for that. But you don't want to see it, so maybe pick it up. Amen. And be put a it difference. somewhere. 
these little things matter. Absolutely. I believe, Absolutely. you know, so start there. Brian, um, is there anything that we didn't talk about? We covered a lot and this has been um, so inspiring in so many ways. Is there anything that we didn't touch on that you think would be really useful, helpful uh, for our listeners and yours? I want to, I'd like to ask your listeners to follow me on Instagram and Facebook uh, and Twitter. And we're on Twitter at B Courtney Wilson. We're on Instagram at Brian Courtney Wilson, Facebook at Brian Courtney Wilson. And in particular, I want you to follow me there because we've been doing a series on Thursday nights called Breathe Again, mm-hmm. Thursday night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. A lot of times we have some a guest on and I'll interview them about the steps that they've taken moving forward in this season. Uh, we've had Bun B on, uh, Smokey Norfolk has come on, the last guest we had, and uh, various guests. And uh, uh, the whole point is remembering that this next breath is a gift. Amen. Taking this next breath together and in anticipate in anticipation of the future that we want to see. And I, so we gather for an hour and, and talk about that. I call it a song and a sit down. A and song and a sit down book. Thursday nights. Yep. So I love I'd love to for your listeners if they have an opportunity to join us, to yes, join us there every Thursday, six PM Central Standard Time. And uh, I think that'll be a blessing. Well, you are a blessing to us. I'm going to include everything that Brian just said in the show notes um, and the link to all the social media platforms, as well as to uh, the Thursday night uh, powwow of sorts. I know I listened to one where you interviewed a professor and I thought it was really insightful. So um, I just want to thank you for the many ways that you're communicating and that you are lifting us up. We need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. Um, And we will come and follow you wherever you are. So that is uh, that is something that we need and we're happy to do. Um, and then I want you to say, this is Brian Courtney Wilson, and I listen to Pivotal Moment. This is Brian Courtney Wilson, and I listen to Pivotal Moment. That is what you heard from Brian Courtney Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, today, the awesome pastor, uh, gospel superstar, and man of God that is helping to lead us in the many directions uh, that God has provided and helping us to get closer to the gifts that are so deeply planted in us for that harvest to come. Amen. Pastor, am I speaking? Amen. You keep calling me pastor. I don't have a church. I'm speaking those things that be not. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) The church is in the heart. The church is in the heart, Brian. Come on now. You told me to visualize. I don't think I don't think the uh, Church of God in Christ will be down with that, but okay. (laughs) Oh my goodness, you are so funny. Well, I do want to thank you, to Brian. This has been fun and and insightful. You should be able to have fun in the name of the Lord, and this has been uh, informative and also um, enlightening. So thank you. Oh, that's you know what? That's the advice I give too, man. Laugh as much as you can. Some of this stuff is absurd. (laughs) You might get laugh at it. Come on now, you know. And then and get back to the serious <laughs> business of living your life Ooh. in ways that manifest the divine, for real. And but learn to laugh because it's some, it's some it's some laughable things going on around us. Amen and amen. That is a good place to end. I love that. And don't hang up. Um, thank you for that, Brian Courtney Wilson. We will talk with you soon. Yes, yes, ma'am. And thank you for listening to our comeback episode. Stay tuned for more in our Power Player series. I'm your host, Nikita Faustin for Pivotal Moment. And remember, where you are and where you want to be is within reach. Until then, stay blessed.